Should we just get started since you guys are all here on time? Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so thankfully we didn't have a snow day today because the last two times, the two snow days of the whole year happened to be when we had these meetings scheduled. So third time's a charm. Anyway, thank you all for coming. Um, do we want to just quickly, because there's a few new faces, just go and just introduce ourselves if you don't mind. I'm Allie Ranch, Deputy Director of Human Services. Marcy Minnick, Selectman. I am Don Anderson, your Chief of Police. My name's Alicia Sillers. I'm the Youth Director for the Town of Darien's Youth Commission. Tyler Nolan, um, Program Director, Laurel House, Inc. from Stanford. Scott Paris, Director of Darien Senior Center. I still remember. Laurel House, Assistant Director of Human Darien Human Services. Denise Quayle, Kids in Crisis. Uh, John, John Zagrowski, First Selection. Janet King, the Community Fund of Darien. I'm Jennifer Gardner, Darien YMCA. Marley Hayes, Town of Darien Communications. Garrett Mulcahy, the Gaffney's Farm. Jed Lawrence, Lawrence Funeral. Lane Blumenthal, Family Centers, the Center for Hope. Brandy Maniscalco, the Community Fund of Darien. Phoebe Oler, Kids in Crisis. Uh, Crystal Hill, Chair of uh, Council of Darien School Parents, which is an umbrella organization for all the PTOs. Chris Jones, at home in Darien. Amy Daniels, Depot Youth Center. Dave Knopf, Director of Health. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. So a little formal business. Um, well, first, um, if we could have an approve, a motion to approve the minutes from October. John, I don't know, you missed this part, but we had two meetings scheduled before this on each of the snow days. So third time's a charm. The only two snow days we had were the meeting scheduled. Not so the moment. <laughs> yes, exactly. So would someone like to make a motion? Thank you, Amy. Second. Thank you, Tyler. Okay. So it's been a long time since we've all been together. So we meet, for those of you who are new, we meet quarterly. Um, and one thing I do want to talk about today is just the mission going forward or what our purpose is going forward. I think um, when we first gathered, it was in May of 2022 when we were really, our town was in the height of, of tragic losses and, and crisis. And this was our forum to come together and all be on the same page and share what we were doing and be supportive to each other and decide what kind of programming was important. So feel free to chime in, but I feel like going forward, I think this is important for us to continue to have quarterly meetings so that we can all discuss what's going on and what initiatives we're taking, what issues you might see, and also in between those meetings, certainly it's kind of died down a little bit, but you can send emails to me about what programs your agencies um, are, are hosting, and I will send it out to the larger group. There is still about 50 people in the group, but it's mostly this, the same contenders who are here right now that come regularly. Any thoughts or any comments that you want to make about that and about our mission going forward? No? Sound good? <laughs> okay. Um, so why don't we start with any, um, and I can start, but um, upcoming events that your agencies have and any agency updates. Um, we are, and I put flyers right here, going to be offering another mental health first aid training. Um, May 15th and 16th, so feel free to take a flyer and I can send it out also to the group. Um, again, this is used, the town is offering this free to anyone who lives in Darien or serves the Darien community, so I know all your respective agencies have had um, had employees um, attend these, these pro this program and have hopefully found it very useful. So Paula Sutliff, the public health nurse and I, are the ones that co-lead this, um, this training. So that is up to 30 people. Um, it's from 8.30 to 1 o'clock each day at Post 53. It is um, funded by the town ARPA funds, um, so please spread the word. We have five people registered already um, from a, one of the churches in town. Um, so that's what I have to share in terms of updates, in terms of upcoming events. Anyone else like to share things? I, just in regards to this as well, I, I think it's probably just at the peak with, when some of our college kids are gonna be coming home. And to take this course as an 18 and over, I think it's a really valuable course for college kids and post-college kids to take. So we wanna spread the word um, to families who may you know, wanna send their kids who are 18 and over. Um, it's a good resource. They're always the first touch on mental health. And I know many people like, over the two years now have asked about youth mental health first aid. Um, and so there's, this is my understanding. I'm only trained in adult, but it certainly can be applied to younger adults too, or teens, not so much little children, but um, then um, So there's adult mental health first aid, then there's youth mental health first aid, which is training 
people, lay people, to work with to, with teens. Then there's teen mental, and I think I'm getting the names correctly, teen mental health first aid, which you actually train teens to to perform to um, you know train other people how to work with kids. But that is very complicated. This is my understanding um, that in order for that to happen, you have to have someone. It's usually done through schools because they have to have screen the children who are, and anyone who has more information, please chime in because I've never, this is just my understanding. Um, it's a very complicated process because you don't want every 16 or 17 year old just signing up for a course and then taking on that responsibility of talking to someone who might be in a mental health crisis. Um, are they equipped to deal with this? Are they having personal struggles themselves? And then they have to have support systems, whether it's social workers, counselors, whatever, in place to help those children too. So. Anyone else who has any information about that, chime in. Is that kind of hitting it on the head, the nail yeah, on the head? When, when we've um, sort of explored that, it, 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 ju it just does require kind of that level of oversight. And so you have to be prepared to kind of have that felt in, and if that doesn't go away, that needs to be sustained. Right. And I think that's why there aren't that many um, trainings available, because it is really complex, understandably. But at the same time, the kids probably talk to the kids before they talk to their friends as they talk to anyone else. So that being said, um, I know there are various entities. I know the depot had thought about it at one point or, or asked about it. Um, but right now, the only one the town is offering is the adult mental health first aid. But I feel like you can still benefit in, in working when you're working with children from, from taking that as well, because it gives you an overview. Um, so we probably will have another one because we have to have three every year, Paul and I, or else we lose our certification. Um, so we did have one in February. So we'll probably, we did have one last August, and believe it or not, we thought August is a quiet time, but we did have plenty of people. We had close to 20 people. So we'll offer again, and college kids will still be home. Um, anyway, okay, that's all I have in terms of updates of upcoming events. Anyone want to share anything else? Is anybody from the school here? Alicia Dad's supposed to be coming. She probably I know they, they had other meetings going on, but she is supposed to be coming. I can share. Okay. Uh, I'm new. Okay. Um, so I'm Phoebe. I work for Kids in Crisis. I also run the Lighthouse program, which is um, the LGBTQ programming that we offer. Um, and we host a social support group at the Darien Depot. They've been very gracious in hosting us. Um, the program is free and does not require a sign up. It, so social support is it's not a therapy group. The premise is, um, is simply just helping kids learn social skills and see peers like them and adult role models. Give them that sense of community in Darien. Great. What is group that? Uh, middle and high school. Have you started it yet or is it? Yes. Okay, is there a good it turnout? Meets, it meets every week. Um, and it's Wednesdays from 5.15 to 6.45. Is there much turnout? Yeah. Okay. okay. Great, thank you. I'll speak on behalf of the schools. Oh, sorry, just quickly. I know that they have their Out of Darkness walk coming up. But I think it's April 28th. It's a Sunday. Yeah. And, um, yeah, that's the right date. And I think it's, I read it, it starts, like, the check-in starts at 11. It's at the high school. And last year, it was, I believe, it was the first one at a high school. I mean, they do mm -hmm. the college walks, but it was the first one in Connecticut at a high school. And we had a great turnout, and various mental health um, agent, local mental health agencies that were there, um, and not just mental health, but um, other agencies, social service agencies, um, with tables set up and all of that. So hopefully we have a good turnout again this year. I would imagine we will. Um, I think that's a good kickoff, too, because May is Mental Health Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. So it sort of gets that started. Um, to start thinking about things yeah. programming. And until someone comes, I did notice, and, and anyone wants to chime in, Wave Strong, they just did, did um, name the circle, I believe it is, maybe the police would know better than that, it's called Wave Strong, right? The circle around the high school, it's Wave Strong Way. Wave Strong Way. Yeah. yeah. So that's. Can I ask a question about that? Because I, I was looking at Facebook quickly before I, this morning, and there's a lively discussion right now on the, I think the moms of their hand about the Wave Strong Way and how it, I was just, my blood was boiling. Just, this was shoved down um, our throat and kids don't need to see signs, kids don't, they need actual actions and there's just like a lot of back and forth. I just, I think it's good to know what people are talking about in the town. I wasn't mm -hmm. aware that this was controversial at all. Yeah, I wasn't but either. I haven't seen that post. It's unfortunate. So, that is does anybody have any intel on this? 
because I haven't heard about it yet. And I actually hadn't heard that anybody was against. It seems like an interesting thing to be against, wanting our kids to uh, support each other. And right. So just so you know, there is there are some. But the only the only other color I can offer on this is Lima. That's Board of Education property. Way right. Strong Way is not the address for Darien High School. That's like a ceremonial naming for that circle. Right. Just like we have for the war veterans, you know, ceremony, ceremonial naming of public roads. But it's still 80 High School Lane. It's just a ceremonial naming. And that was done not from the Legal Traffic Authority because it is Board of Education property and, and not a public thoroughfare. It's good to know. Thank you. Um, nice. just oh, perfect timing. We were just talking about the schools. <laughs> I was just going to say, um, Judy Phillips is organizing um, the um, the organizations to have tables at the event. So, if your organization's interested, I would imagine Judy's the right person to reach out to for the Out of Darkness Walk. Great. Yeah, Alicia, we were just giving updates and said that the Out of Darkness Walk is coming on April 28th at the high school, um, and hopefully we have a great turnout like last year. And then we were talking about the Wave Strong Way, the, name, the circle was named, not an official address, but it's, uh, what did you call it when you name ceremony. Ceremony. ceremony? And that some people were upset by that, but to each his own. <laughs> um, okay, other updates? Um, just from driving youth, uh, so we are working on the training programs for the spring, which Could you speak a little bit? I can't hear yeah. because I know yeah, we can't yeah, yeah. Thank for you. Sure. Thank you. You and Jennifer are both involved in. Um, we're working on a program for end of April around um, toxic achievement culture. Um, and that will be something um, Jennifer Wallace is a well known, now, a now well known author who's been speaking in a lot of communities. Um, and um, that's gotten a little overblown and, and it's been sort of all over. So we are tapping Amanda Craig, who is sort of on our own area, and she addressed that. And um, somebody who a lot of parents know and trust and all of that. And then um, a second program in May um, around sort of being an ally for LGBTQ plus kids. So, so how do you support and how do you um, kind of be a positive presence sort of for for those kids um, responding Great. to the survey data that we have. Great. Thank you. Crystal. So on uh, May 7th, our uh, CDSP DEI committee has arranged for the director of Sasko River to come in and do a, a speaking session at the Darien Library. It's, its target audience is elementary and middle school parents, but it's open to anyone. And the focus of the talk is going to be on sort of the importance of um, the sen a sense of identity uh, development in our children from you know from the get go, um, and sort of that sense of how as parents we can have a sense of belonging and really foster a true sense of identity with our children, which long term you know helps their self esteem and self esteem in high school. Great, thank you. Yeah, hi, Alicia. Just to add a little bit more to the schools, um, we are. Uh, your eyes open we have our school climate survey that goes to family students and staff that will be coming out the 22nd of april through may and it's really to look at things around safety and look at different demographics social emotional safety physical safety communication so that's coming out um we launched anonymous alerts yesterday which is an anonymous reporting application that allows kids to identify if they're being bullied if there's any threats or risks to themselves or others um, and then we're excited for the walk. I've actually been in contact with my counterpart in New Canaan as well to invite them and the group from Richfield as well. So great. Yeah. And we date TBD, but we're also working on hosting a, um, a specific presentation for mental health and athletes and having a panel of both um, someone from psychological background, sports psychologist, but also athlete professional. <coughs> try and talk about some of the factors of maintaining balance at a high level um, for sports. Great. Two questions I have of it. Can you go over a little bit how the alert system works? I've had a lot of questions about it. I don't have anybody in that age group that would be using it yet, but a lot of parents have been asking, what is this about? How does it work? Who's manning it? Um, yeah, so it's, um, it's, it's either a app based on the phone or it's on, there's a computer 
computer-based app that is on the kids' computers and is only available during school hours just to make sure that it follows the needed with those kids. So right now it's 7 to 3. Um, and the kids can log in and there's a forum where they can fill in some information. They can engage with someone back and forth if they choose to or they can choose to report anonymously and not engage. So then it gives information and then that gets disseminated. So right now it's myself, uh, Leon, Director of Security, both school principals at the middle school and high school only to start. And then so once something comes in it would be fielded to the appropriate school and council administrator. And then it's the responsibility of the administrator to follow up to make sure that these are legitimate reports. Yeah. Okay. Do other towns in the area use it? Yeah. So New Canaan has one not exactly the same, similar. Um, it's called Say Anything. Um, several Westchester County schools do. You know, Ridgefield does. Some of them, um, the hours are different. So the idea was to start with middle school and high school and then and the kids have all been trained on this or shown how the app works or they had a, they had a workshop around it um, and then there was parent meetings that were held um, I think those are probably available online I know Ellen at the high school did one jointly with Leon and I think Carolyn did one jointly with Leon for middle school parents as well I'm curious to see how that works it's a good resource Thank you. Were you going to say something about that? Yeah. 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 Oh, I think you were, were you done, Alicia? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thanks. I, I feel bad with my back. Uh -huh. everybody. Uh, just want to let you know the seniors in this community have been well taken care of uh, in terms of mental health. Coming back from COVID has been really, really difficult. Um, and we are definitely back from that tsunami. Uh, but also to let you know all the health and wellness programs that we offer. Every uh, health professional has added a mental health, no matter what they're talking about, a mental health feature in their talk. So even if they're talking about hip replacements or a gastro problem, mental health has become really the focal point, sorry, of um, many of these presentations. We also have had a huge, uh, by huge I will say, at least 35 active people in town who are taking care of somebody with a cognitive disability who are coming to support group on a monthly basis. I actually facilitate that. And also who call in the morning at 7 o'clock when I'm here with concerns and, and, um, and issues. So we've expanded our relationship with the Alzheimer's Association. I've actually been a support group leader voluntarily for them. I think it's been four years. Uh, and I continue to do that. Um, but we're seeing the integration of more folks being in the community at early stage uh, issues and also more people caregiving people at home, which is a wonderful thing, but there's a, a lot of um, uh, there's a lot of issues of being able to manage that and staying healthy and well yourself. So <clears throat> it's kind of moving forward. We're expanding to have more evening ideas, evening programs to be able to, uh, for folks to come at even after work. And um, it, it really is, since since COVID, I cannot tell you, tell you the amount of people that are coming forward that need to talk. The other thing is that we're all being asked to be in livable communities. We probably got reached out for that as well, which means that people that have cognitive issues should be integrated in the community, and it shouldn't be seen as a, um, a mental health issue from the standpoint of it's being an organic issue that causes mental health problems. But when people are isolated and uh, ostracized, it makes it hard for everybody. So I just wanted to tell you about that focus, but we, we have been on board for the three years we were doing intakes outside. Um, we were here for our seniors, and at this point it's four decades of seniors coming to the center. So all of the programs that we offer, from exercise programs to entertainments um, to other academic programs, are all there to keep people resilient, connected, and um, and really at, at the best of the community. Do you want to just give some details on the support group that you referenced at the beginning? It's the third Thursday of every single month from 1 to 2.30 for anyone who's dealing with anyone with any type of cognitive issue. It doesn't have to be designated as an Alzheimer's type dementia. 
And this is for the caregivers? That's for the caregivers. The third yeah. Thursday, one to two. I'm, I'm looking at actually opening another one up because right now I have, um, I think, 24 gals that are spouses. And then I the balance is adult children that are their, it's their parents. And they have very different issues, very different needs for support. So. And, and the senior resident would have to be in, or the co person with cognitive impairment, would they have to live in town area? Yeah. No. As long as a person is dealing with someone that is either in geographically in the area, uh, for the most part right now, everybody that we have, save three people, are either have a Darien resident, so, and they're not living in our town, but their mom or dad is, or the other way around, if they're living in town and their mom and dad can even be out of state. So if you have this need and that's you're amazing. looking for resources and need the support, we're there for you. And that's Hill here in Tunnel? Pardon? Where do you host? That's the Mather Center. Yeah. Thank you, Beth. Sorry, I didn't want you to look at the back <laughs> of my head. <laughs> and so one thing I did want to bring up, and so Thank you, Beth and Chris, for coming. Chris from At Home and Darien, Beth from the Senior Center, because I think all, from the get-go, we were always focused on youth mental health, which obviously was because we were our town was in a crisis. But I think it's really important. I think many of us have spoken about the need for us to expand our, our uh, you know, what we're, our population and also focus on adults and seniors, of course. Right. So anyone who's interested, I was thinking, I'm looking at you, Susanna, because you have lots of good speakers in your, in your hands, um, but I think it would be great if we could have some kind of event um, focused on, you know, preserving your mental health as a senior or whatever it might be. Um, so any, and I know lots, most of you in here are focused on working, Chris? Well, I, I don't want to interrupt, but just kind of building on what, what Beth said, you know, there are a lot of seniors who will not go to the senior center, um, and we try to get them there, but there, there are large numbers that we drive, we transport to doctor's appointments. So one of the things that we're trying to do is develop more programs, more events to address isolation and loneliness. Because mm -hmm. we are working with a lot of seniors that live alone, uh, who have nutritional problems, who have health problems. Um, so there, there are a number of things that, that this year we're gonna, be, we're gonna be doing that are really new. And I'll, I'll, I'll update as we move forward, but it's really to address those seniors who are who are alone mm -hmm. and not getting out. Right. And loneliness obviously and I know John you've spoken about this in a couple of meetings and you had some statistics, not to put you on the spot, but um, is is something that I think post COVID, even before COVID, but definitely post COVID I think has become such more of a, a concern and an issue that people are highlighting. And I think Silver Hill has is it tomorrow? Their grand rounds? Grand rounds. Yeah. yeah. So they have wonderful grand rounds. They're um, open to anybody and they're free. There's a whole kind of work group that's um, our director of education, one of our psychologists, and um, our director of spiritual care um, doing a lot of work on loneliness specifically and actually planning the community program at the library in Canaan in May, which anybody is welcome to attend. Um, but tomorrow, Jeff Katzman is giving a grand round. So, um, if you're interested, I'll send you the I'll send you the person's email at Silver Hill if you want to sign up for it. Um, you sign up, you'll get a link, um, and it, it will probably also be on the website afterward. Yeah, and their programs are wonderful. I mean, if they get a little too scientific-y and they're geared towards prescribers, then I tune out, and Cynthia, right? But otherwise, they have really good topics, and they're free, and they're, anyone can register, right? You don't have to be a, like a mental health professional, but... Um, so I think, and if anyone has any thoughts or comments on that, I think that would be a good, like, next kind of endeavor for us to take on is, is um, you know, focusing on that senior population and their mental health needs. Um, yeah? Um, just a thought to that. I know during COVID, when our high school seniors were graduating and um, there wasn't kind of like a big graduation celebration. One second, I meant seniors like geriatric. I, oh, right, okay. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> Um, what the PTOs did and the high school did was they actually had families put together like little uh, baskets that you would deliver to the home of the senior high school senior that was graduating mm -hmm. to just show them like hey we care about you congratulations something like that for Darien seniors that are isolated where they wouldn't necessarily feel the anxiety of someone coming into their space mm -hmm. but that there but we could show that there were community members that care and that are available and that 
could go a long way in terms of making some of these senior seniors mm -hmm. um, feel less isolated. Yeah, we, you know, a number of the schools and the kids care programs have been real gracious and they've made Valentine's gifts and we deliver those to, to seniors. Um, we're fortunate, we have, we have a lot of volunteers who step forward and want to help the seniors and we have volunteer shoppers, volunteer visitors. Um, our challenge right now is getting seniors to agree to a visitor. Uh, we're working with sons and daughters who want somebody to come in and visit their father and the father's too proud and says, no, we, we don't want to do that. We don't want, I, I don't need anybody. Um, so that's one of the things we're, we're challenged with is we've got these amazing volunteers who want to get out there and get into the homes and, and help out. So certainly we would uh, welcome any, any suggestions there uh, to try to make that happen. I know the Youth Commission, you work with the Senior Center on, on some partnering the um, wreaths. Is yeah, we did, holidays? Um, we did wreaths, we did hearts, um, we're doing um, floral medallions, and middle and high school age students sign up and they decorate them. And actually the last one that we did um, around Valentine's Day, uh, six girls from the middle school were granted permission to leave school during the day and came and distributed them, which was really meaningful for the seniors and the kids. We're doing um, um, something in May. And just I want to speak about isolation. Not everyone's a social person, and so not everyone you know fits the bill of going out to places either. Uh, so that there has to be that component too. So there are there are even folks that we talk to that wouldn't come into the center, but they might go to something at the library, or they might go to something somewhere else, or they prefer not to be out. So we always have to remember when we're dealing with older folks, too, is that there's a certain right to self-determination. So that's where also our partnership comes in with Allie specifically, because she will do case management if someone has no one, or if they need other encouragement, or there's, a, there's a, an idea that they might be either a safety risk for themselves, or for others as well. So we try to meet people where they're at too. Getting out is not always everybody's teacup either. You know, going to church once a week might be enough for somebody. But the point is is that we have to, you know, be out there to be able to check and assess. So that's one of the ways that social services comes into play. And, and Ali is our municipal agent, so if there is any kind of danger or concern, there's that going forward too. But there's you know you have to you have to remember not everyone wants to be in. I, I have a husband who says that he will be a monk when he retires and doing all artwork and gardening because that's his thing. He, he wants to be as far away from his people as possible. You have to know that there's people out there that would prefer to have a more either an intimate relationship with someone or somebody that's just checking in and that's enough. So we always have to determine what that person wants. A little bit different than for the kids where we're, they're still becoming. So, just wanted to yeah. add that point. Thank you. So, oh yeah. I have a question. Would it be more organic for like checking on your neighbors? Like if I have a, a neighbor who's elderly, and I don't even know that they're having an issue, but if I knew like in my neighborhood, I don't know how you would connect that, but like I would check on my neighbor, like there's a house, I know someone older lives, I've never knocked on her door, but if I knew there was a, a need, I would. You can call the human services department. We have. We have really good neighbors in Darien, for the most yeah. part. Yeah, I think <laughs> um, And people call our office even just like for welfare checks, and obviously we would go, and sometimes we bring the police. But um, but we will reach out to people. We'll knock on people's doors. So we have people calling all the time, like I haven't seen my neighbor, or I'm worried about this, or maybe I've seen them and I'm worried about their their look like they're kind of declining. So we certainly can be a resource. And just so you guys know, so Beth and Chris and I work very closely together. Um, we like to think as a kind of a safety net for the seniors, particularly the vulnerable ones. But so yeah, absolutely, people can call our office, and um, you know, and we will reach out to people. Okay. If there's any concerns? Um, just a personal experience idea um, with my mom. She wouldn't accept like signing up for a program to have a visitor, but um, she does open the door when someone knocks. Something about, I guess, her age range, uh, late 60s, is like doesn't want to sign up online or get, you know, doesn't want to go through that, but likes the organic feeling of someone knocking. 
So anyone who'd be interested in working on that endeavor, please reach out to me or else I'll just reach out to you if I think you could be good. Um, one other thing while I'm thinking about it, and I'll open this to you guys, um, especially those who work with kids, but another thing, trying to think outside of just working with the kids, and I, that still obviously is, is a priority, but also I know we focus on like how to help parents with their children, but what about helping the parents themselves? Um, you know, that putting on your own oxygen mask before you can take care of somebody else. And I know, from what I can re recollect, I don't know that there's something specifically for parents. It's more focused on parenting. Am I, any thoughts on that? Is, is that something that we should explore? Maybe not, you have a bunch of things coming up between thriving youth and whatnot. Maybe it's something we look at in the fall or something, but. Yeah, I, I mean, I know thriving youth programming is always because we're thriving youth. Right. <laughs> um, we're always focused on the kids, but to your point, sort of, there is kind of that adult component of you know, taking care of yourself. And um, so I don't think it's something that through, through that group has really been explored, but I think with the programming group next year, it's certainly something to consider. Okay. I definitely um, think, I'm sorry. I'm also going to um, loop Sarah and Sarah McCarty in so that she joins oh, these yeah. conversations. Good as idea. Well, she'll, be, she'll have good thoughts. Great. Are we going to say more? No, I definitely can see a, a, a need for some training on parent burnout. I think that that's also um, right. something pretty prevalent in town. I mean, absolutely. Kids are really overscheduled, and parents are really trying to make all made, make meet all those needs of their children, and I think that can be an issue. So. If we can start to address some programming, and then I think it's a good idea. Yeah, agreed. I don't know if there's a representative from Parent Awareness here, but that would be. Um, oh, true. <coughs> excuse me. Um, a good organization to tap for something like this. That's a good idea. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Just a couple updates from the depot. So we are doing. Um, a session in partnership with OK to Delay and also Thriving Youth Darien um, on April 23rd at the Darien Library, who's also a partner, on smartphones, social media, and your kids. Uh, there will be airing a documentary called Childhood 2.0, which is about the effect of um, social media um, on mental health, particularly of kids. Um, Cyberbullying, online predators, suicidal ideation, um, and then we'll have a, a panelist for a Q&A as well. So um, we're looking forward to that event. We already have, I don't know, 70 something people signed up for it and we just started promoting, but that okay to delay group, as you haven't heard, that was around five or six years ago, has been reinvigorated with a um, young uh, mom and former educator named Megan Shane. And so she's bringing it back. They did an event maybe two months or three months ago at the DCA, um, and it was a packed house in that room. So there are definitely a lot of um, moms of elementary age and preschool age kids that are trying to figure out how they can delay putting smartphones in the hands of their now you know fifth graders, which seems to be the norm in Darien these days. So um, they are reaching out to parents and kids that are in you know, sixth, seventh, eighth grade and don't have phones yet to really use their experiences to, um, you know, help provide perspective. Like, how do you get in touch with your friends if you don't have a phone? How do you make plans? You know, do you feel bad about, like, that sort of stuff to really broaden and, and, and hopefully collectively have some safety in numbers as they try to delay the use of smartphones. What's um, the date on that, Amy? Uh, it's April 23rd. And um, the information and registration is uh, live on the library website. I think you wouldn't mind just sending me the links for all the things you're mentioning and then I'll just send out one email instead of multiple <coughs> emails um, so because there's so many good things that are coming up and just so we can all get if you have to register or whatever it might be yeah um, we're also I'm not sure exactly what we're going to be doing something at the depot to um, celebrate mental health awareness um, and holding some events but we're also reaching out to all of the high school clubs, sports teams, kind of everyone in town to offer our space as they um, look for ways to celebrate and to raise awareness around mental health as well. So we just offer our space for free for them to come in and use it. Um, 
and then we are doing you know positive mental health all of the depots end of the year parties will happen in may and the first week in june so four fifth six seventh um and eighth grade parties the eighth grade party this year is going to be in conjunction with tops for their graduation party and will be held at the depot um, and there is a there is a, a participation fee but any kid that needs it can just fill it out and it's free so um, we everything that we do at the depot um, is free there's a section on our website that parents just kind of fill it in it's anonymous um, Ali has the code so the families that she works with through here and human services get that as well yeah thank you that's great um, one thing I just remembered that I wanted to mention um, is we still have the Human Services Department on our webpage, still have a list of providers that are accepting new clients. And actually, Allison Kina in my office is working on updating that right now. So if you go to the town website under Departments and Human Services, right there it says Mental Health Resources. So I will also put these events that are coming up on there, but also if you're looking for providers, we have people that we periodically you know, check in with to make sure, not people, agencies and individuals, um, who are taking new clients, because um, I know that's one of the biggest obstacles we've said all along is finding providers who are taking new patients or clients and some take insurance, some don't. We have the links right on there for each person. So just to keep that in mind. Yes, Marley. You know I can't keep quiet. Um, a very vulnerable population that thrives in this community is middle-aged men. And I just confirmed with my partner here that they are the second highest rate of mental illness and suicide rate. Looking around this room, not one person that I know of touches that group specifically. Mm -hmm. So if collectively we could figure out how to reach them. That's a good point. That's a good idea. Like kind of have some kind of... Yeah, like not parenting, not no. youth, not just, you know, it's middle-aged men living in a pressure cooker. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. I'm looking at Silver Hill again, thinking, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I had to chat with Susanna. Susanna. Where you say, Tyler? Seems like the boards of the youth sports leagues could be a good place to start on that. Well, that was going to be my question for the school system. Are there any kind of uh, requirements for any of our coaches or youth sports programs that these coaches are required to have any sort of mental health first aid training or? Few of them have just as, just, for just the out of not just men, that's women that's too. because they've asked for it, not because they've been required. Not a requirement. What we do is we have a meeting and overview, like when they have their every season changes. I go and I meet with all of the coaches, mm -hmm. um, and then I'm also available. Like different, it's not required, but I work with some of the teams and the coaches. Like they'll ask, you know, I want to talk about this kid or things like that, but nothing specific to them if that's what you're getting at, um, which I think could be helpful as well. Um, so it's more at all the meetings and then check-in points, um, and then Chris Manfredonia runs a, it's more of a leadership group within the coaches, um, and for the, for the youth athletes that are in the leadership, but I do think that that might be a good place to start for just, um, reaching that group. I'm almost curious if we should pull Chris Manfredonia into this organization, um, just to get him abreast on how many resources there are out there so that he can disseminate that to his coaches. Because that, that's a trigger area for a lot of our, our kids in high school. Going maybe back also to making sure that he sees about the mental health first aid and share with all the, all of yeah. I mean, I think you guys already do that because we've had some, definitely school personnel and we've had a few coaches, but and like I said, it's still, I mean, even though it's for people 18 and over and it's geared towards adults, it still can apply to kids in high school. But it might be a good thing to send that to you know the director of the youth hockey program and the director of the baseball program and the lacrosse program. Right, not um, just the town. Not just the town. Mm -hmm. So I know that um, DVCC offers a program called Coaching Boys Into Men, which is a national program, and the idea is you know to teach respect to the boys so that when they become men, so it's a little bit different. But there are, I wonder if there's some that because it really comes down to like the vulnerability and then how not to be vulnerable and, and that sort of stuff. So it seems like there might be a session that the mental health task force could do. And I say the youth sports leagues only because if you look at the, the boards across town, which ones have more men on them, it's the youth sport, like that's maybe an area to start and to have them start pulling in some friends, I don't know. 
And they're coaches too, right? right? There's a lot of men who are coaches to young kids who some of that anxiety starts right on the field. When you have a, a parent coach yelling at a young kid about performance, it, it, could, be, it could be dicey. And they start off that self-esteem very young mm -hmm. and that pressure very young. So it might be a good area for us to focus on. Yeah, absolutely. So some good ideas. Uh, David, um, do you have anything you want to share with us? Well, I have some good news and I have some <laughs> not so good news. So uh, we'll start with the good news. Um, we recently met with, at the urging of the community fund, we recently met with Kids in Crisis Group and first selected a town, town administrator to discuss using some town funds to help pay for the Teen Talk Counselor expansion into the middle school. And uh, at that point, we determined that we could potentially use the opiate settlement funds that we have uh, in the health department uh, budget at this point to utilize some of that money to pay to help pay for the counselor and I brought that uh, is issue before the advisory board of health and they voted unanimously to support that so at this point I, have to, I got back to Janet yesterday to tell her of this and we're working on how much money we can actually contribute to making that happen and uh, so uh, I believe that that's going to happen this year so Great. we'll see how it goes in the future, but right now we will be able to commit some of our opiate funds for that purpose. Uh, on the not so good side, uh, we've been also informed that the health needs assessment that we've been working on has, I think, ground to a halt due to health issues surrounding the principals in the firm that we've hired. Um, I have absolutely no idea. Ali's on that group that receives the emails. We don't know when it's going to start back up. So uh, I'm not optimistic that that will be completed uh, by the end of June, which was our original deadline. But you'll come back and help us with it once you retire? I did want that to be, you know, I know. done yeah. as part of it. You know, that was really important to me. We started this a year ago. I was going to say, it was a long time ago, yeah. And, you know, it's just been one delay after another, none of them on our end. Nope. So uh, I'm very disappointed. And they're sure the data analysis phase now, right? Yeah, well, they we're, we're doing the data analysis statewide, you know, the comparison data, and then trying to, you know, compare things. But that's just, that just has stopped. The survey was good, and the survey is good information. And, and we got a lot of people, right? Was it like 600 or 700? Over, seven, over 700, and the Residents. kind of critical mass was 500. So we, we definitely exceeded what we thought we needed to get meaningful information. Mm -hmm. um, and there were a lot of comments that are really interesting. So at the very least, we can have a discussion about the, sur the community survey. And uh, But yeah, I'm, I'm very disappointed with that. But it's not through anyone's fault. Could we not move it to another consultant yeah. if the data is already in and just have, like I'm thinking about Nina, who driving youth uses, that might not be the ideal one, but are there other people that we could just there, get a refund and move the... Well, the we didn't spend on. that much money on it, you know, so I don't feel that, you know, there's a refund. Yeah. Based on the work that they've done, I think it's utilizable, you know, and there's still plenty of money. That's a grant, that's part of a grant fund, and that grant money is available for probably another year. So we can still get it done. It's just that it's not getting done in the time frame that we hope. And you know, I really didn't want to move it, right? But we may be forced to. We so we'll see. We have more data people too, other than Nina. Okay. So yeah, I, I know there are more out there, you know. But uh, you know, but worst, that's the worst case scenario. But I think within the next week to ten days or two weeks, we're going to know if this is actually going to happen. Let's stick with the good news for now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sounds good. Thank you. <laughs> any other updates or anything anyone wants to share? Um, please remember to send me all of your stuff so I can compile it in one email and to sign the list to make sure, you know, the, who's in attendance. But I, I have to just say, and I know you probably don't want to be in the spotlight, but I have, I'd be wrong to not mention that our chief of police, after over 40 years, will be retiring tomorrow, this week. 
and thank you. Tomorrow's my last day in the office, scheduled last day in the office. We'll see how it goes. Well, thank you for all you've done for our community, for your peers, and, and everything in all of these years of service. Oh, you will you. be missed. It's been quite a journey. Thank you. Just a couple of things. I'm really impressed at the breadth of people who are here that uh, play a role in trying to address mental health for the community. So I applaud all of you for coming today. Um, every time I sit in one of these discussions, I learn a little bit more about not just how widespread this problem is and all its different facets, but how many unique and interesting solutions are being worked on by so many capable, qualified, and very dedicated people. So thank you all for coming. Um, as I've said publicly, I, I think this is a, a very important task force, and I'm really grateful all of you are focused on it. You know, Allie and Marcy, you guys have put a ton of effort into this, and I'm really grateful. Uh, Chief, thank you. If we need to interact with you, I guess it needs to be today, but uh, <laughs> and congratulations on all that. The one thing I wanted to offer is if there's something that I could do through this office to help you, which is show up at an event, uh, come speak somewhere, be it a ribbon cutting, or just sort of build support, uh, either for the task force or anything any of you are doing, doing individually, uh, give me a call. I, I'd love to stop by uh, or help build enthusiasm or show up at a fundraiser to just speak and uh, talk about some of the things that, that you guys are doing and just emphasize uh, the importance that I ascribe to this for the whole town. So please feel free to call on me uh, uh, in this capacity and I will, be, I, I will help you, okay? All right, well, thank you all for thank coming. It's great. Thank you. All right, anything else? Um, so our next meeting is July, right? I'm so confused now with all the changes. So we had January, it was supposed to be April, yeah. May, June, July. So the, um, I'll send it out in the email that everyone sends me with their links to their events. I'll send out the next date. Um, but thank you. Is, does someone want to make a motion to adjourn? Whoa, okay. <laughs> Amy and David tied. <laughs> Second. Okay. Thank you all for coming. Good to see you.